Coming up on tonight's episode, things are getting explosive as we're taking a look at three of the most powerful wonders in the entire series. Right, I know we've only just kicked things off in this episode, but it's time to take a smoke break as we visit the Cigar Galaxy. This galaxy is famous in the astrophotography community because about 10 years ago, a star within it went supernova and you could see it through even a small pair of binoculars. I think it's fair to say that one common thing on every stargazer's bucket list is to witness a supernova explosion. For most of us, we envision this occurring to a star in our own galaxy and lighting up our night sky. But supernovas are quite rare and with good reason. The last observed supernova by us humans was in 1604, which means we've been waiting for more than 400 years for it to happen again. Fortunately, we can view thousands of galaxies with the aid of our telescopes, thus increasing our chances of seeing a supernova occur somewhere else in our universe significantly. In fact, in the case of the Cigar Galaxy, it actually comes packaged as a two-for-one deal, alongside the stunning Bode's Galaxy. These two are very easy to observe for his northern hemispheres. They are located at the tip of the constellation of Ursa Major, otherwise known as the Big Dipper. Now the really cool and unique part about the supernova explosion in the Cigar Galaxy was that it was a Type 1a supernova, which is something extremely unique. This wasn't a giant star collapsing under its own weight, it was something a lot stranger. A dead star known as a white dwarf was stealing matter from a companion star, except it got greedy, its appetite could not be matched. So when its mass crossed a very precise limit of 1.4 times the mass of our sun, the star detonated and the white dwarf disappeared without a trace. No neutron stars or black holes. That's it. This supernova wasn't a collapse, it was a total annihilation. The very cool part, as far as astronomers are concerned, was that because these particular supernovas occur at precisely the same mass limit, we know that the brightness of them will always be the same, allowing us to determine the distance of a star based on its relative brightness from here on Earth, and ultimately learning how far away a galaxy is from us. So it wasn't just a pretty light show, it was also a cosmic measuring stick. For us amateurs, it represented an opportunity to document one of the coolest events in the universe, all from the comfort of our own back gardens. Now when this happened, I was just getting into astrophotography, so the only galaxy I'd ever taken a picture of at this point was the Andromeda Galaxy. But even as a 17 year old still learning the ropes, I was able to document this fascinating historical event. Unfortunately, the brightness of supernova explosions don't last very long, but as fleeting as the existence of this supernova was, you can still observe the Cigar Galaxy alongside Bode Galaxy as you prepare for the next supernova explosion. M82 is a starburst galaxy, which means there is a lot of star forming activity going on, so it's definitely worth keeping an eye on. And let's face it, even with the $500 smart telescope, you are able to document large amounts of structure and detail. So it should therefore come as no surprise that I've managed to create this mosaic masterpiece with the help of the Remote Observatory Telescope Live. The telescope that I used has a field of view that is too narrow to fit all of Bose Galaxy in it. So instead, I captured a four panel mosaic, which I really like. M81 is the epitome of what you think of when someone says galaxy. Whilst the Cigar Galaxy is a great example, the galaxies do in fact come in all shapes and sizes. If you are interested, you can download this image for free from my Patreon. Now Hubble has imaged both M81 and M82 independently of one another, revealing more detail in the spiraling arms of M81 and more of the starburst activity in the core of the Cigar Galaxy. Yeah, I really like them. They are my favourite pair of galaxies and will forever remind me of the moment where I became really hooked on astrophotography. Being able to see things like this from your own garden is so surreal and it genuinely blows my mind that more people don't talk about this on a regular basis. I've decided to bunch M82 and M81 to together and rank them 33rd on our leaderboard. Now, in a galaxy like our own Milky Way, supernova explosions occur once every 100 years. And our next wonder is a very special exception to that rule. 
because on average supernovas occur in this galaxy once every 10 years. This is the appropriately named Fireworks Galaxy. As beautiful as it may look, this is one of the most violent places in our universe. Why? Because it produces stars at three times the rate of our Milky Way, which means even more massive stars. And the thing about massive stars is they live fast and they die young. Since 1917, astronomers have documented 10 different supernova explosions within this galaxy alone. Meanwhile, here in the Milky Way, we are long overdue one. Come on, do something. The fireworks galaxy is face on from our point of view here on Earth, making it an easy deep sky target for his backyard amateurs. With the aid of the $500 smart telescope, you can make out the structure of the galaxy. The $1 million remote observatory brings out the colorful nebulae in its spiraling arms. And lastly, we have Hubble's infrared capture of the hot glow of what is another starburst galaxy. If you were to place a bet on where the next observable supernova will be in our night sky, it wouldn't be the worst idea to put your money here. I think the Fireworks Galaxy is a worthy inclusion on our Wonder Wall, especially since it is one of the most powerful wonders in our night sky, which is a big part of the reason as to why it earns a wonder rating of 78. Let me know what your ratings for the Fireworks Galaxy are in the comments down below. If you do, then you'll be automatically entered into the 42 Wonders of Our Night Sky giveaway, featuring prizes that range from smart scopes to copies of the soon-to-be-released 42 Wonders of Our Night Sky book. As always, all you have to do is tell me what you thought of each of today's wonders. Let me know your ratings in the comments down below. Tell me what you think deserves to be the number one rated wonder of Our Night Sky. With just four episodes to go, there are only 12 more wonders to be unveiled. Last week's episode revealed that the moon only ranked 8th on our wonder wall. For many of you, this had to be the number one wonder of our night sky. But it's not, so what is it? You can enter into this giveaway once per episode and up to 14 times over the course of the series. Best of luck. Now, to finish off tonight's show with a bang, we're going to look at what will be, potentially, the biggest supernova of our lifetimes. If you were to ask any avid stargazer, what star should I look at if I want to see an imminent supernova explosion? Then they would all point you to the exact same red star called Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is this ominous supergiant that sits in the shoulder of Orion and is effectively living on borrowed time. It's so big that if you were to swap it out for our sun, then the star would reach beyond the orbit of Mars, swallowing all four of the rocky planets. Its varying brightness hints at its imminent demise, which some amateur astronomers suspect could be triggered by shooting it with a green laser. The results, however, so far have proved to be inconclusive. In fact, as recently as the start of 2020, Betelgeuse underwent significant dimming, to the point where excitement started to build as stargazers held their breath for what could be the supernova explosion of the millennia only for the truth to be revealed as a massive dust cloud forming from the star's ejected material, ultimately obstructing some delight from the star. The truth is, although we fully expect Betelgeuse to go supernova in the near future, for astrophysicists that time span can mean anywhere from 10,000 years to a million. Which means our odds of seeing it ourselves are slim, but certainly not zero. Regardless of this star going boom, it's still a delightful red gem in one of the most beloved constellations in our night sky. We'll continue watching the red supergiant with great interest, but as of right now, it continues to outline the shoulder of Orion the Hunter. And to be honest, as cool as it'd be to see it go supernova, it'd be such a shame to see it disappear from this iconic constellation. Visible from Rome to Rio, this star really is an ideal wonder for both northern and southern observers. And that's why for me, Betelgeuse earns a wonder rating of... 75. Armenia, Argentina, it does not matter. You can see it almost anywhere, bar the South Pole, sorry penguins, on our planet. It is one of the top 10 brightest stars in our night sky and it truly is a sight behold and deserves the 19th position on our Wonderwall.
And with that being said, that is the end of tonight's episode. I hope you've had a very explosive night and you'll join me again next week when we'll explore three more wonders and see where they rank on a wonder wall. I'm Damon Scotting and this was Astronomical. Next week, we're going to explore the goddess of love, as well as the elephant trunk nebula and how to spot the seven sisters star cluster. 